that, I want to bring in Mark Levin, host of Life, Liberty, and Levin, and a Fox News contributor. He joins us now by phone. Mark, good to have you with us. I heard you speaking earlier when the news was very fresh um, just a couple of hours ago. Uh, your thoughts as you've continued to reflect on the loss of your dear friend. Well, Martha, first time I met you was at his wedding, wasn't it? That's right. That's exactly and, right. And uh, he was one of my best friends. Pardon me. It's okay. I would say this. Very, very happy with the outpouring of support for him. And in many ways, he would be shocked by it. People say he was a very regular guy. He was a regular guy, but he was utterly inquisitive, curious all the time. He had a huge library in his home. He read the great philosophers. This is a man who never went to college, and he didn't need to go to college. He, uh, we exchanged over the years many, many emails, lots of discussion about various issues. He, he became an expert on the Constitution, the history of the nation, all self-taught. Um, he was as kind as kind could be. You know, early on, uh, he's a wonderful staff, snurdly. You can see the jokester Cookie, uh, Kit Carson, who passed away, and that upset him, all of us, greatly. Uh, and I would start to send him early on, you know, some issues on the Constitution, independent councils, the Clinton years. And finally, he tells a cookie, who who is uh, Kathleen Gleason, a wonderful lady, who did his audio. You know, I want to talk to this guy directly. So he would talk to me, and then he gave me his email, and then we would, and he appointed me the director of his legal division, F. Lee Levin. <laughs> of course, he didn't have a legal division, but that's the way he was. Yeah. And... Uh, I wanted to know about my kids. <clears throat> Later, I wanted to know about the grandkids. Had us to his house. Uh, was a tremendous gentleman uh, and host. And um, he smiled. He laughed. He was also serious. He was very, very worried, particularly now, about the future of the country. And I think about all these things. And I think, what was it that attracted him? To Donald Trump, you know, a lot of us eventually were attracted, but he was attracted early on, and I think it's this. Trump was an outsider. Trump was rejected by the elites. They said Trump couldn't succeed. They all said the same thing about Rush. And I think Rush identified with that in many respects. Uh, and also, I think Rush felt, why should we be controlled and hindered by what the left or by what the mainstream media tell us what's okay, what language we can use, what we can discuss. This is America. We are free human individuals, human beings. And he didn't think it was terribly controversy to be an old-time defender of the country. He was, he was an absolute patriot. Uh, he gave it mounds and mounds of money to different causes without making a big fuss about it. He would help out individuals without making a big fuss about it. Um, and uh, <clears throat> even, even his later books... Uh, he and Catherine, with Liberty and uh, Paul Revere and these folks, uh, in order to reach out to young people, he really felt that the country, well, he thought it was more than worth saving. And when I think of Rush, generally, I worked for Reagan, too, and I knew Reagan. I campaigned for him in 76 and 80. I've known some very, very great people. And Rush Limbaugh, if he's not at the top, he's near the top of the greatest people I've ever known. I think uh, he's in the category, as Newt said, of a Reagan, of a Bill Buckley, of a Milton Friedman. He was not just a broadcaster. He was an activist. Um, he had his own way of encouraging people to do certain things. He, he was, to some people, a fatherly figure, to some people, a brotherly figure, to some people, like a son. But he was always good old Rush. We could always rely on Rush. And, get, and, and the worst things got, the more he wanted to tune in and listen to what Rush had to say. What is Rush's take on this? That's what everybody wanted to know. What is Rush's take? I'll tell you, he encouraged me to get into radio, as Hannity did. I didn't really want to get into radio or any of it. And 
I remember once he said he wanted me to sub. I said, well, I don't know how to do it. He said, just do it. You'll do mm-hmm. great. So he, he'll throw you in the water, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's a big audience to just mm-hmm. do it. And I said to him, when I first started out on radio, what can I possibly say after you speak? And Hannity speaks, then it's my turn. And he said, Mark, they've heard me, they've heard Hannity, but they haven't heard you. But this is the kind of guy he was. Yeah. He didn't say, only listen to me, I'm the best, even though he was. Yeah. He, absolutely. Uh, hands down, Sean will tell you, I'll tell you, <clears throat> absolutely the best. But he, he didn't even look at himself the way, you know, people would listen to him, you know, about uh, alone from God and one on top. This was all tongue in cheek stuff. He was hilarious in person. And a great guy. Yeah, he had a great sort of self-deprecating sense of humor that I think people misinterpret sometimes um, with, you know, the excellence in broadcasting and talent on loan from God and all of that. You know, he it, it was very funny. Uh, I always thought that he had a great sense of humor and was hilarious and he was generous with, with people and different, even, you know, people don't think this, but, you know, he liked to hear people's different opinions about things. Um before I let you go, you, you just said something a moment ago. You said, because I always think of him as such a great optimist and a big picture um, observer of America and the future. You said he was worried right now. Can you talk an about optimist. that? He's an optimist, but he wasn't a Pollyanna. Mm-hmm. That is, he, he can see the rising tyranny. He's concerned about all these things. He, the long picture, yes, he's an optimist. We're Americans. But he also understood in order to succeed, we had to fight. We had free will. And, you know, he would encourage people to get involved on Election Day. He would encourage people to vote. <clears throat> he would. You know, it's very interesting. He was able to do something I'm certainly not able to do, which is he, he was able to kind of back individuals against other individuals without offending the people he didn't back. You know, like mm-hmm. in the Republican Party, I offend everybody, apparently. But he... <laughs> He, 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 it, it, you either born with that or you're not. He had a, a fantastic nature. Um, and, uh, and I, but he was and is, as so many of us are, are concerned about the future of the country. Look, I'm not a psychologist, I'm, I'm not a mind reader, but I feel certain he would see, particularly the young people today, defend your country, fight for your country speak out in, in smart ways, learn the true history of your country. Many men and women have come before and died for this country. Don't be devoured by the, mm-hmm. by the neo-statist, neo-Marxist left. He would want others to carry the flag. He knew the world didn't end with him, as we all know the world doesn't end with each of us. And he would want us all, all, to carry on to save this great country and defend this great country. I'm telling you, I know that for sure. And uh, he will be uh, grievously missed. Mark, thank you so much. I'm so uh, glad that he encouraged you to um, begin your radio career. And Sean Hannity encouraged it. You're such a great voice for all of us on the Constitution and on history and on things that really matter. So I appreciate you being here today. Thank you very much. Thank you.